And all it all comes down to the forecast as well. So how is that eclipse forecast looking for Monday? Got to say it looks pretty awesome here in New England. Notice uh, the lighter colors here are the clear areas. Red, of course, is cloud cover. Notice how unlucky a lot of the eclipse totality path might be. Places like Dallas, Little Rock, Indianapolis, all in that path of totality. All unfortunately for them, pretty likely to have some cloudy conditions. Now, notice here in New England, we look like we'll be completely clear in April in New England. That is just wild, but the way this is playing out is looking like we will be one of the sunniest spots in the country with some of the best views of the eclipse. And in terms of our weather in general, with our temperatures also looking very, very nice for the eclipse, temperatures generally ranging between 50 and yes, 60 degrees. So spring is coming back next week and it looks pretty good as of this point for the eclipse. A bit breezy out there. Uh, there may be a couple clouds around, but overall looking pretty nice and sunny. Uh, don't know how we got lucky like that, but we'll take it, especially after putting up with the snowstorm this week. Now, of course, we've been doing our eclipse forecast focus. I did one yesterday it was Rangeley. Today's eclipse forecast focus is Jackman. Also a very big town for the eclipse. It has some of the longest totality duration in the state with three and a half minutes of totality on Monday of next week. There's also a big event going on there. Versant Power is sponsoring uh, some sort of astronomy event at the town hall. I think it's in partnership with UMaine Orono. So if you're going up there, they'll have lots of fun events and that sort of thing in downtown for you to enjoy. So yes, highly recommend heading up to the mountains to see it. I know traffic won't be fun, but uh, with this sort of forecast, this is an event you really don't want to miss out on. Now, the eclipse uh, here on Earth, super rare event. Got the details on why that is. Well, a total solar eclipse like the one coming up on April 8th is a pretty rare event, especially at any given point on the Earth's surface. The next one here in Maine, not until 2079. So why is that the case? Did you know? we change just a couple factors on our planet, we could see a total solar eclipse every single month. This is a view of the moon, the Earth, and the sun as it's typically laid out in our solar system. You'll notice the moon's orbit around the Earth has a little bit of a tilt to it. It's about five degrees, but that tilt is enough to make the Earth miss the moon's shadow pretty much every month. The shadow either goes to the left side of Earth, the right side above Earth or below it, not intersecting with Earth itself. That's why solar eclipse is pretty rare. That lineup where we do see the shadow of the moon hitting the Earth's surface only happens about every 18 months. So just that little tilt keeps us from seeing a solar eclipse every month. Also, what has an impact on us seeing a total eclipse every month is where the moon is in its orbit. The moon's orbit around the Earth is not a perfect circle. It's a little bit elliptical. It has a far point and a close point. That close point in its orbit to the Earth is called perigee. The far point is called apogee. Now, we can see solar eclipses at both perigee and apogee, but a total eclipse where the sun is completely covered can only happen at perigee. At apogee, when the sun, uh, or the moon, I should say, is further away from the Earth, it cannot fully cover the sun's disk. So this is what results. You can see a ring of the sun left around the moon. So uh, if we just got rid of the tilt but left the elliptical orbit, we would see either an annular or a total eclipse every single month. If we fixed both of those factors, we would have a true total eclipse on Earth every single month. So to sum all of this up, again, without that five degree tilt, we would be seeing those eclipses here on Earth every single month. And the way we're able to get them on Earth anyway is that just so happens by crazy coincidence, the sun happens to be 400 times further away from Earth than the moon is, and it's also 400 times bigger. So the moon and the sun, the same size usually in our sky. I'm meteorologist Christian Bridges here in the studio.